Hey everyone, it's Daryl from Houseplant Journal, and in today's video, I'm going to talk about the Thematophyllum zanadu, formerly called Philodendron. Now, if you ever go to a conservatory, you should check out the uh, bigger cousin of the zanadu, which is called a saluum or B something. Uh, I'll put it on the screen. Anyway, when you see these guys, they're just massive. Their trunks go kind of all in these crazy shapes and their leaves spread out like open hands catching the sun. But the zanadu is like a, a nice uh, miniature version. You can see here the leaves also have that kind of open hand look. So I've had this Zanadu for a couple years and it was a gift from my friends at Crown Flora Studio. Um, the pot as well, interesting uh, terracotta pot they gave me. Now in terms of light, again with most house plants you got to put them where they have the widest possible view of the sky. Now this one in particular, I have it at my parents home in front of a south facing window but it has blinds and as you can see when we measure the light for most of the day the sun is shining on the blinds and we're getting anywhere from a thousand to almost four thousand foot candles so that's a really excellent light for this plant and so in terms of watering for this guy once we have the light correct then i just take this chopstick and gently probe around to feel how moist the soil is a couple inches down. And once it's uh, mostly dry, when it's two or three inches down, then I give it a good soaking. And whenever I see new leaves growing, that's when I take it as a cue to be fertilizing. So I add fertilizer to my water. It's like a couple of drops into whatever the dilution, the instructions say. And I, and I do that only when I observe new leaves growing. You see, you can't quite just go by, oh, it's springtime, so it's time to fertilize, because indoor plants are not as affected by the swing of temperature as outdoor plants are. I mean, they are affected by the amount of light, but the plant doesn't actually go into any sort of dormancy because inside is not as cold as outside. So it means that these new leaves could be popping up at any time, so that's why it's important to fertilize based on observation when it comes to indoor plants. When you see active growth, then you add fertilizer. Now, one of the most striking features about this plant is the trunk and all these little eye looking things on the trunk are actually the scars of leaves that have fallen off. And with this plant, I did something funny where I kept every single leaf that has ever fallen off. I kept them all here. Now, the reason I did this is because I wanted to prove that older leaves will eventually fall off. And that's why you can't just look at a leaf and say, oh no, it's yellow. That means it must be overwatering, something ridiculous like that. You shouldn't use just the evidence that's on the leaves to diagnose some sort of problem. You need to look at the overall situation of the plant, mostly about its light. So when you are giving the best possible light for the plant, and in this case, I've got it in front of the south facing window through the curtains, that's already very good. Uh, and you're watering according to the correct strategy. For this guy, it's whenever partially dry and you're fertilizing whenever it's necessary. Then you can just let nature take its course. As you can see, I have this huge pile of leaves that fell off. I didn't panic over a single one because, because I knew that that is how this plant grows. So if on your philodendron, wait, no, thematophyllum zanadu or the saluum, if you see the oldest leaf falling off, don't panic. Just thank it for its years of photosynthesis and move on. You see, people often judge their plant as though their personal actions have the most profound effect, mostly watering and fertilizing. But in fact, the environment, light and temperature have quite a lot more influence, I would say, on how the plant does. So when we evaluate how well a plant is doing, you have to take both into account. 
both the environment and your actions. And in that way, you actually won't beat yourself up when you see lower leaves falling because you'll know that you've given the plant the best possible environment and you know that you are doing your best with the care, watering, fertilizing, then you can let nature take its course. So I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, if you have pictures or stories about your own Thematophyllum, Zanadu or Saluum, I'd love to hear them. I'm Daryl, thanks for watching. Bye.